and we are back thank you so much for choosing to stay with us and in case you're just joining us welcome to kenya's gold now it's time for the gold conversation with the aim of understanding where the gold in biogas is and to help us with that conversation we are joined by professor dr rewe thomas associate professor pwani university and also the current deputy vice chancellor great lakes university of kisumu thank you so very much for making time now jumping straight straight into the conversation, Professor, from an educational perspective. Are our schools sufficiently packaged with the knowledge that our young people need to understand when it comes to renewable energy and also sensitizing them enough? Thank you, Gina, and thank you for having me. Uh, hi, Terra. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, just uh, to tell you, five years ago, that question would have been very difficult to answer uh, because of the awareness at the academic institutions, the importance of bioenergy and how it can be utilized. But I'm very, very delighted uh, to say now that our university system, especially in the university, mm -hmm. there are programs now at uh, diploma and degree levels mm -hmm. uh, that are addressing uh, this matter of renewable energy and also uh, the issue of uh, what you can call renewable uh, technologies, mm -hmm. like the biogas, biodigesters, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we are not there yet, but we are quite uh, excited by the fact that uh, faculties are beginning to listen and beginning to draw curriculums that will inform the next generation to know what to do with bioenergy. Kwa sababu sasa wewe ndio mm. professor kusema hivyo bado mhadhiri mwalimu mbaya anafunza. Mbona katika taifa la Kenya bado mm. hata ingawa unasema kwamba curriculum inafuata hiyo hatuna mizizi ambayo imeshika sasa katika masuala ya biogas. Ah uh, tarehe leo swali nzuri sana. Mm. Uh, kwa sababu jambo hili la uh, to see it to biogas peke yake mm -hmm. ni tuipatie jina bioenergy mm -hmm. uh, manake biogas ni ben, ni product mm -hmm. ambayo inatoka kama kwa ile uh, organic matter ambayo me, yule uh, grant biotech ametuonyesha hapa mm -hmm. so uh, ukiangalia mizizi ambayo inatakana hishike ina, uh, ina tupasa kwamba tuchukue hii bioenergy uh, ambayo inatoka kwa organic matter which is the organic waste. Mm -hmm. uh, naweza kusema hivi, wacha ni uh, uh, mfano mdogo. Mm -hmm. uh, mimi na wewe hivi tuna tupa mm -hmm. chakula kiwango cha uh, kilo 100 mm -hmm. kila siku. Mm -hmm. Tuna tupa inaitwa food waste. Mm -hmm. Na hiyo uh, kilo 100 mm -hmm. nikiiweka kwa biodigester itantolea karibu 5 meters cubed of gas ambayo ndio biogas hiyo. Mm -hmm. uh, ni ninaita uh, green gold kwa sababu chakula hicho ambacho kinatupwa mm -hmm. Kenya tu peke yake mm -hmm. inaenda kufika karibu tani trilioni mingi sana. Inamaanisha kwamba eh, kama tunaweza kuitumia kama bioenergy mm -hmm. itoe biogas mm -hmm. basi tutasuluhisha shida hii ya energy mm -hmm. lakini sababu sasa kukujibu direct kwa nini haijashika mizizi mara nyingi uh, tukiangalia uh, teknolojia hii ya biogas tunaiuza haswa kwa small holder imebaki pale chini kwa viwango vidogo mm -hmm. ninafurahia sana huyo grants biotech na wengine kama kilifi plantation na wengine kama flexi biogas ambao wameanza kufanya kitu naitwa scaling kama energy yote itapata nafasi katika nchi yoyote isibaki tu kutumiwa katika viwango vidogo lazima ifanywe scaling ili iweze kutumika katika viwango vikubwa ndio tuweze kuchukua hiyo chakula ambayo inapotea hiyo organic matter food waste market waste tu tu tuibadilishe basi iwe energy yeah asante now, in the spirit of still learning more about bioenergy, we have seen from the feature of the day that young gentleman generating biogas from the waste from flowers, right? Yeah. But more often than not, with the information that is out there without scratching the surface, what you got Daniel to biogas ni samadi ngombe, you know, without the knowledge of flowers can give you the same. So I want to pose a question myself as a poultry farmer. Mm -hmm. Am I able to generate biogas as well? And also what are other substitutes that can help you in generating biogas? Wacha nianze hivi, ama nitumie kizungu kimombo kidogo. I got to know uh, about biogas in the university. That's why I'm telling you five years ago this question would be very different. 
And the only thing I knew about biogas is that it's produced from cow dung, as you're saying. But uh, having interacted with the industry players, the first one to interact with was Flexi Biogas, by my, my friend Dominic. He was able to show and prove that any organic matter with calorific value mm -hmm. can produce biogas. Mm -hmm. And we demonstrated it in Puan University. Mm -hmm. And uh, we ended up actually powering part of our kitchen in Puan University with biogas. And that substrate was from the kitchen, meaning all the food that students had eaten, and it was being thrown into a landfill, we collected and used it in the biogas digesters. The answer is yes. If you're a chicken uh, farmer, if you're a flower farmer, if you're a maize farmer, in fact, in Europe, maize is not grown in some places for eating. Mm -hmm. It is grown to power biogas digesters for use in producing the biogas energy. Mm -hmm. Now, you can imagine, I went to a place called Flensburg in, in Germany, and we were taken to a meal, and we had the meal, and we ate. And then they took us where they were producing the meal. And uh, when they showed us how they were fertilizing the vegetables, mm -hmm. they were producing bioslurry from a biodigester that was being fed. I'm, I'm, I'm adding another, a very interesting alternative feedstock, which probably will excite your viewers. It is called human poop. It's also a substrate. And it's, uh, it's a, a discussion on the table because of the amount of human waste that mm -hmm. is there. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, in terms of perception, it has been difficult uh, to bring it into the table as part of the big, uh, uh, rich amount of uh, uh, sources of feedstock that we can feed the biodigesters. Mm -hmm. But we had eaten the food that was actually fertilized from biofertilizer from, from mm -hmm. human poop. Mm -hmm. And there was biogas being produced from that biodigester. Mm -hmm. Of course, some of us tried to put their fingers to vomit, but it was too late. Mm -hmm. And the food tested very well. <laughs> <laughs> there was no problem at all. But uh, I'm just adding on to the fact that there are so much um, sources of uh, feedstock, variety of them in our, uh, in our country, mm -hmm. uh, from the municipal landfills, uh, even from our pit latrines mm -hmm. and from our toilets, mm -hmm. and of course, uh, from Flower. agriculture, flowers, maize, mm -hmm. any uh, organic material serves as a feedstock. Now, una was on Gubza Professor, you know, on a Kanakamba Nikama at Tuna Farm Mwingi, Sana, Kusana, and Niwapi Tuna Quenda, Ele to the Lisha Igesi. But see, Quaco, Villa Villa, una done any Wapi Tuna Cosendo, what wing was Jingis, the Gadiga Hale, Yakufana, Mokta after Igesi. Ah, Gesi he a biogas Ni Tunaita Gesi Safi. Na kwa sababu ni gesi safi, inasaidia ata kwa mambo ya mazingira na climate. Lakini ukiangalia uraisi wa kuipata. Kiwango cha kwamba gasi kama hili ya LPG ambayo inanunuliwa pale, uh, the liquid pe, uh, petroleum gas, ambayo inatoka pale kwa petrol stations and everywhere na ukiangalia kuni ile watu wanatoa kule forest inakuwa ni rahisi kuipata kwa sababu ya availability distribution na mambo kama hayo sasa ni wapi kunaweza patikana biogas kwa urahisi kwa sababu sio watu wengi wako nayo hata hivi ni kuuliza majirani wako wale wako na biogas mm -hmm. unaweza wahesabu na vidole mm -hmm. so haija enea kiwango ambapo tunaweza kufurahia kwamba ninaweza hata nikasema niko na biogas naweza kuuzia jirani mm -hmm. tunataka tufike mahali ambapo uh, jirani wako watatu mm -hmm. ukihesabu kama mko na compound kidogo na uko na uh, an organic material production whether inatoka kwa mimea uh, ama inatoka kwa wanyama hivi tumesema si samadi ya ngombe peke yake mm -hmm. unaweza kuitoa kwa mimea mm -hmm. na kama unakula na hiyo tumesema 100 kilograms waste per person basi inamaanisha kwamba unaweza kuwa na biogas mm -hmm. shida ile iko na nikimalizia hapo ni uh, kwa sasa hatujaweza kurejesha ile bei yake ifike chini kiwango ambapo uh, mtu wa kawaida ambayo tunasema ndo anasukuma soko mm -hmm. anaweza akai aka, aka kuinunua mm -hmm. hapo kwa bei ndio kuna kazi
-hmm. na hapo ndio ningesema baadaye nilipata nafasi mahali ambapo uh, mambo kama ya serikali policy inaweza ingia mm -hmm. ili tuweze kushukisha be mm -hmm. ya technology ambayo inasaidia mazingira Mm -hmm. Now, in speaking to different farmers in the country who already are embracing the technology of using biogas, mm -hmm. one of the challenges they face is the fact that during cold weather, amasa zingine wakachu usiku, the bacterial anaerobic respiration is mm -hmm. not as vibrant, oh, which yes. is a very key process. Oh, yes. So how can they work around that to make sure that the process is still as vibrant as when the weather is warm enough? The problem with academia is that we have so many solutions that cannot be adopted. Mm -hmm. Of course, engineers can easily do external heat exchange mm -hmm. and, uh, and heat that uh, biodigester, and it, it actually can, can, can be supplied with some external heat. Mm -hmm. That sounds good mm -hmm. at face value academically. Mm -hmm. But how expensive is that for a farmer? Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, colleagues uh, uh, from, from the industry have employed simpler, cheaper methods to try and maintain the heat. Of course, if you depend on the biodigester you're talking about, there is a biodigester that we normally bury underground, mm -hmm. the one we call the fixed dome biodigester. Mm -hmm. Somehow it is uh, having a relatively stable temperatures even during cold weather. But now with the industry uh, expanding into the tubular above ground biodigesters, which are easy to install and they are easy to adopt and we are marketing them and we are advocating so that many people can have biodigesters. The challenge comes. It's above ground. It's going to experience the, the cold weather at night and if you are in Kiambu, you're going to feel it. Cold. So some have come with the, uh, what we call the greenhouse effect. Mm -hmm. For example, if you happen to buy one of these tubular systems, they usually have the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. yeah? And uh, if you, if you, it's the same effect. If you have a greenhouse for your crops, you're actually doing what you call a macroclimate, mm -hmm. trying to make it warmer for those crops inside. You're doing the same for the biodigester, housing it in a greenhouse so that all the heat that was received is retained as much as possible mm -hmm. inside the greenhouse to continue to warm the biodigester. Mm -hmm. That has, uh, what I can say, solved the problem to some extent, okay. but not 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, sasa mm -hmm. kuna changamoto mbazo zunakumba yeah. sekta yeah. hiyo basi tu yeah. zungumzia na utupatia labda pengine umetoa sulu kadha, lakini bado kunazo changamoto mbazo zunakumba yule mkuli mambaya nge jingiza sana hapa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Changamoto kubwa mm -hmm. uh, kwa swala hili la bio uh, digesters naweza sema manake kwa kweli bio digesters ndio imekuwa teknolojia kuu ambayo imeweza kuchukua uh, nafasi eh, kubwa kwa hii swala la bio energy hii teknolojia ya bio digester sasa changamoto ni kwamba kwa sababu soko halija kuwa tuseme kizungu tunasema the economies of scale ya yeah? ukiangalia bidhaa zingine ambazo zimepata nafasi kwa soko huwa zina wale wanaitwa in and out businessmen wanaingia katika soko mpaka bei ina stabilize kiwango cha kwamba mtu wa kawaida anaweza ka, akajimudu kuifikia chombo kile sasa bado bei kwa mfano kidogo tu wa familia watu watano tukisema 6 meter cube saa hii ukiuliza ndugu zangu hawa ambao wako kwa soko hapa wanauza hizi biodigesters ukipata chini ya 1070 utakuwa umejaribu yeah? na tayari hiyo eh, ingawa ukiangalia kwa muda kama utakaa nayo miaka kumi, ukitumia sasa miaka kumi upime hiyo bei kweli inafaa miaka kumi, kumi na tano, ishirini, kuna zingine zinakaa hata 50 years kwa hivyo hiyo bei inafaa lakini kwa mkenya wa kawaida kupata hiyo 70000 uh -huh. kwa pamoja uh -huh. sasa ku, kupena should of course ni sasa kupata hawa financing institutions tuko na ndugu zetu kama sistema.bio na wengine wako na hii uh, system ya ku, uh, kupatia mkulima uh, hiyo hiyo chombo sio wao peke yao wengine pia wanafanya hivyo alafu wanalipa polepo uh -huh. pole pole kupitia finance institution Iyo ndiyo um, naona kama ni changamoto kubwa sana. Access kupitia uwezo wa kuilipia. Mm -hmm. Ya, yeah, lakini tukisema mambo ya kujua mm -hmm. nitakushangaza kwamba sasa uh, changamoto ya kujua imeanza kupungua mm -hmm. kwa sababu 
tumeongea sana hata hivi sasa kuwa hapa ni e, inaongeza e, kule kujua kwa Kenya na hata wakulima wengine now there is also a challenge of one of the byproducts of yeah. the gas is yeah. water all right oh, yes. which condenses mm -hmm. in the system all right and then that affects the flow of the gas mm -hmm. as a farmer as someone who is adopting the biogas system mm -hmm. what can i do to control that so that i'm making sure what is passing through there is just the gas thank you gina for that question the good news here is that all the fabricators all the uh, the biogas players we have that have interacted with they all know about this problem. Unless we have one that is untrained and is uh, probably in the industry uh, by fraud or by mistake. They know how to do the piping because water flows by gravity. And if they do the piping well, then uh, by the time it reaches the kitchen, uh, the condensation on the pipe allows uh, the water to flow back. So what they do, which is, I believe it's an innovation that is cheap enough, like uh, the, the biodigester I began with uh, when I was first funded by the National Research Fund. Mm -hmm. I like to give them a shout out because they began this craze and opened up the space for the biogas research in Pwani University. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we did was very simple. When the water flows back, it enters into a bottle trap, a very simple bottle, water bottle. Mm -hmm. These ones that are thrown around, mm -hmm. plastic waste. Mm -hmm. So you dig it, it becomes the lowest point in the piping system, mm -hmm. okay. such that all the condensed water mm -hmm. gets into the bottle trap. Okay. And that bottle trap, uh, the good news is methane does not dissolve in water. Mm -hmm. okay. So the pipe that is going into the bottle trap mm -hmm. uh, is able even to scrub it, scrub uh, meth uh, the biogas to remove um, uh, things like hydrogen sulfide, but at the same time allow for the condensed water to, to yeah. be collected as methane goes into the kitchen. So is that what our farmers are calling the water trappers? Or what? Yes, the condensed trappers, okay. uh, the, the water trappers. Right. Yeah. Asante sana, mm. Professor, kama uwe ni mwanafunzi wa kemia, mm. mesi umepata mm. sana. Ameleza Professor na kwa undane zaidi umepata kufamu kwa mba kuna utaratiba mba unafuata ili tupate tope chujio. Lakini sasa tuende giriga mapumzi kwa kidunya angela utupate buhuta asari.